All right, welcome everyone. Chris Petrie here. I'm really glad you're here. We're gonna have an exciting time painting this beautiful uh, ocean scene with fishing shacks and docks. Tons of beautiful, uh, interesting um, uh, information on this painting. We're gonna have a fun time drawing it first and then painting it. You're gonna see the whole process broken down simply uh, and effectively as we go. And uh, we're gonna show you everything on camera. So you're gonna have our photograph of our scene right here on our phone set up in the upper left hand corner so you can watch the photograph as you're working we're going to have the palette in view so you'll see the palette and all the colors i use i show you all the color mixes as we go along here so you can get all these beautiful colors mixed up this is not an extremely um uh, difficult color mix uh color mixtures in this painting it's basically some beautiful blues uh, red and gold, some yellows with some some really beautiful viridian green, and um, we just have a fun time. We're doing the glazing technique, which you're really going to have a fun time with. We're going to wet the whole paper first once we're done with our sketch, and get some tons of uh, water on top of the paper, let that dry, and then we go over the top and get our beautiful washes of color in here, the more darker tonal values of the painting, some shadowing and uh, reflections underneath the, uh, the docks here along these uh, fishing shacks along the ocean. We'll do those shadowing colors last you'll see the final details of maybe getting in some of the uh, wires for the telephones and power for these uh, fishing um, shacks here along the ocean and uh, so let's uh, jump right in and start working right away and I'm hoping you're enjoying the watercolor journey it's a fun one keep sticking with me here week after week month after month and year after year we're having a great time here um, doing these type of paintings where we learn all the really fundamental uh, again techniques and methods of watercolor this one again is the glazing technique which is really fantastic it's a lot of fun you use tons of water and then we get into some really beautiful colors as well okay so we'll get started in just a second all right we just saw the finished painting uh, we're getting started with the pencil drawing first, and I guess the <clears throat> main thing I wanted to cover here when we first start out is, um, you know, you can uh, do your drawings as um, carefully as you would like or as free as you would like. So sometimes I know some of you might like to draw more freer sketches and you might not want to get really involved too much in like perfection as far as your your drawings go. but. Again, you can use uh, rulers. I sometimes will use a, a, a small ruler, a half-size ruler, um, to sometimes get some structural type things, like maybe a house. We're going to do some sea shacks here, as you know, along the water. And uh, so, but again, you, you feel free to sketch it in uh, the way you want to, or to draw it in more, you know, perfectly if you want. Like maybe you're going to get all really, 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 really nice uh, vertical lines like this. Uh, some of you might like to draw your shacks in more of a sketch format, um, so you might have like everything is not you know perfectly vertical. You know most buildings are always built vertically, perfectly vertically, um, plumb uh, when things are framed and so forth. Houses and buildings, um, and then over time they do sometimes shift a little bit, and you'll get a little bit of variation from exactly being straight. But you know, a building over time might have a little bit of you know. Um, irregularities to it but for the most part it's up to you I'm gonna use a ruler on this I'm hoping you can see the picture pretty good here this is a photograph of a fishing village along the ocean so we're gonna kinda of get the um, basic idea of this here um, what I'll do is I'll first start drawing in the buildings here the fishing uh, shacks here and then we'll do the um, the uh, like the uh, pilings and like um, walkways and sort of like a it's like a boardwalk almost but like you know pilings and planks for the um, walkways along the sea shacks and then over here there's a little more um, pilings and s some areas where they pull up the boats some uh, dock areas and things so and um, we'll do some vertical uh, uh, I guess these look like um, power poles so for the shacks they need heat and telephone and things like that electricity so there's a couple uh, verticals for those two so we're going to kind of have some really nice verticals in this painting already I can kind of see it we're going to probably consider the vertical lines um, in this picture as being like the dominant uh, theme of the painting like all the pilings and the in the um, there's some again some um, some poles here with uh, communications and electric on them and 
So we're going to kind of use all those things to make an interesting looking painting. And so let's start out here. I kind of see that the uh, this side of the so sort of the right hand lower corner is like the major area where we have our structures, our fishing shacks with the boardwalk there, the planking and the pilings. So let's do that. Let's let's say about a little bit above halfway is sort of where that happens. The um, the sea shacks are mostly there. So I'm going to just start in one section and work my way over. I think I'll start on the right. And if I look at this picture overall, this photograph, and I'm going to now transpose this onto here, I notice that this first shack here is definitely a little bit over left of center. So if we were to look at this and say, okay, that's the center of the photograph, this uh, first shack here starts a little bit left of center. So if I just, maybe I'll do a quick um, outline of my um, rectangle here just so we have an idea of our rectangle that we're working with. So this is the rectangle here. And I'll just do this so we can see this on camera. Like that, so that's our rectangle. And it looks like our light is pretty much, I would say pretty much overhead. So our lighting, and we like to have our sunlight in our We like to have our uh, sunlight or our lighting just captured in maybe a little insignia on the top of our painting and drawing so that we kind of know where we're going to put our light and shadows. So our light is pretty much overhead straight down this way and a little bit behind the subject matter. So you can kind of see the light is uh, hitting the tops of the roofs of the sh shacks and then the boardwalk area so it is a little bit backlit so if you can imagine the light is coming from the front of our view so if we were sitting in a chair and drawing and painting this live and on location the sunlight would be a little bit uh, in front of us shining towards us and that's kind of the way we're going to see the shadow patterns and things like that and the light patterns on these buildings these uh, fishing shacks along the ocean so we'll continue on here. I just wanted to get that light insignia. So we have that. And then again, we're going to have this, uh, we're going to make this fun and enjoyable. So again, we said the halfway point on our paper was about, is about here. And then we said that the first shack is a little bit over to the left of that. So we'll put our first shack about here. And then I'm just going to sort of get a straight line here for this side of the shack and there's a lot of interesting verticals and lines and things but this is, looks about kind of where things are the first shack here and then that's the first roof line there So that goes back like this. This comes down like so. And you never worry if you draw some lines over things. You can just lift them up a little bit with a kneaded eraser like this. And this might not be that. That, that angle was a little bit too much there. So I'm just going to make sure I get a little bit less than that there. And then this angle goes here. And then the other shack is here. And its roof starts there and it goes up like so. Like this. And then that roof pitch goes this way. And then I'll do another vertical line here, straight down like that. And then there's another vertical line here. So I'm going to try to keep these pretty straight. You can see pretty straight there on, on the uh, lines there. And then I notice um, this one here, of course, will 
keep that one coming down this way. And we're going to have a lot of information in front of these shacks. Like there's, I can see there's a little bit of some staircases in front of these uh, fishing shacks and doors and windows and things. So you're not going to have to really worry about it too much as far as the um, details on the fronts of these here because it's in shadow too. It's a little bit darker. So we're going to paint over this mostly so you won't have too much detail in the front part of these shacks really because it's all in shadow basically. The roofs are going to be light though. The roofs are going to have some sunlight on them so you will see those pretty, uh, in, you know, pretty bright and filled with sunlight on the tops of the roofs. And then again this is all going to be in shadow here, most of this, the fronts of these uh, shacks here, or the walls I should say. Alright, so now we have um, over here the, there's another wall that comes down here and there's another roof that comes here like so. Like that. And then this one comes down like that. And then I'll use the ruler again and just come down straight like that. So again, we're doing some really basic lines here, vertical lines straight. We're keeping them very straight and vertical, plumb, with the ruler. That's going to look really good. People generally like to see straight lines um, in their paintings and, and artwork. And then there's another bit of a um, canopy over here, like so in, in front of this. Like a little bit of a shed roof here. Like that in front. And then there's some posts that come down. Like that. And then maybe like here, like so. And again, you don't have to worry too much. We're going to have lots of lines in this. And we're going to do a lot of painting with tons of water. We're going to use the glazing method on this uh, video, on this on this tutorial. We're going to use the glazing technique. So we're going to do uh, just a ton of water on the painting first. And then we'll go in and add some uh, more uh, interesting darker darks after we get the really light washes on, on this paper first. So we're going to kind of having uh, fun doing that. All right, so we have the buildings so far, the sea shacks here, the fishing shacks. And then um, over here it looks like there's like a, a dock of some sort that has pilings. And we're not going to get, over here we're not going to get to, let's say when you're painting, and you hear me say this a lot, you're the artist, you have to try to make things easy for yourself when you're drawing and painting. And, and always try to think to yourself, can I, t can I like take my artist liberty and make things easier for myself when I'm doing a drawing and a painting, a watercolor painting, of course. Um, can I do things that will sort of, you know, help me to get a painting done without getting into too much detail where I wind up um, just working for an hour or two hours or three hours and trying to do all fine details in a picture you might see a photograph or even if you're out on location. So that's what we're going to do here. You can see from the photograph here and I'm hoping uh, I always try to get the photograph on whenever I can of our um, tutorials here. So you can see there is a lot of details in this and we're going to try to minimize the details. So over here on the left hand side to the left of this side of the shack, um, I'm going to minimize and simplify this by just blocking it out and putting vertical lines and making it look interesting like so. But I'm not going to uh, get too much involved with a lot of details. We can just paint in some really interesting looking lines and things and it'll kind of be to our benefit that we don't have to do too much detail and so we'll do one of our poles here with our electric and telephone lines and things like that and that's about up here which is quite a bit up higher than the tops of the roofs and that's the same there in the photographs and then over here we have the same thing the uh, only this this uh, pole here with the telephone and power lines is a little bit lower because it's going, going in the diff, di uh, into the distance here. So that's going to go like that. And then there's another one too we can see far off in the distance. 
and that's over about here on the picture. We can make it a little bit over here like so, like that. And we can even make that one smaller. Let's not even, let's just make that one one line like that. We'll make that one very, very thin like that. And that'll just be the, and that over there like so. And then we're just gonna, just remember to put a couple lines here like so, like this. And that I think is pretty good. It, we have some, we have another, what I'll do is I'll leave this over here. There tends to be another roof over here, but I'll leave that roof out. And this way maybe we can get some of the ocean on both sides of the shack so that we can kind of see through the picture really nicely on both sides of the fishing shacks. So if I take a larger ruler, I'll try to find my larger ruler now, and I have that. So here in this photograph, I'm going to see that the ocean is about the top of, or actually right at the, um, I'm going to go just a touch lower than the, uh, the roof, where the roof meets the walls of the fishing shacks, like that, the fascia of the, And I'll do that, and I'll make my line, and that's going to be my ocean, distant ocean, like that. And then over here, there's a there's a large, looks like a um, like a large maybe storage box or something, like that. Okay, we've done quite a bit of drawing so far, and that's when I always say. If you've been doing a lot of uh, planning and sketching and drawing, um, no sense in going too much and, and kind of like biting off more than we can chew. Let's just kind of take a, a little bit of a break here right now and then we'll finish the drawing. So usually we can get a drawing done in two passages, let's say. So we do the first part of the drawing, get things situated really nicely like we have here, and then let's take a break and then we'll get in the... Um, pilings and the planking uh, for the um, docks over here in the front of the, the shacks. So we, you can see that here there's plenty of planking and pilings. So let's do that in water and we're going to um, get that uh, into our drawing next. So let's take a break, no worries, and um, be back in about two seconds. All right, we're picking back up again, and I think we are really in good shape with our drawing so far. I think the only thing we'll do now is just try to get in these plankings, and um, that should be good. So uh, I notice right away that there is, if I pick a spot that I kind of know, this is here like that. So I'm going to make, and I'm going to go over this in a darker pencil line. I'm going to go over the the uh, top of this pencil drawing again in a darker drawing quickly in about five or ten minutes. I just want to get the um, board, uh, the uh, boards and the and the, the planking and the uh, pilings here for the uh, this uh, foreground area. So um, I notice right away. Let's use a. I'm going to use a longer ruler here just because the line going from the boardwalk here. So I'll make this a little darker. So these are the fronts of the fishing shacks like this. I'm noticing that the, the kind of the docks that go across here are so like that. So we're seeing some water underneath of this shack here. And then this trails out sort of toward the bottom. So this is a somewhat, not a tremendously angled line, but it, it is like that. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take the Liberty, Artist Liberty, and sort of just say, alright, that's about where that is there. And it's a little bit wider as it, so it's a little bit thinner. Actually, it, if you can imagine, let's get another line here. So now I'm looking and I'm saying the next line is about here. I'm looking at one of these pilings over here next to this shack here. There's a piling here and that seems to be about where that 
thinner planking over here ends and then it gets into a wider section of um, planking like a dock area so uh, let's do that let's take this line bring it down this way and then we have the like that so then we can take this line and go from here to here not drastic but it is a little wider over here you can kind of see it's wider and it's getting a little thinner there like that and then this line goes this way and if I look at it it is somewhat like a um, pyramid so it's almost like a triangle It's almost like a triangle like this, so that's fine. So then we just take another line and go like this and say, all right, that's going to be this line here. Now, all I have to do is figure out where does this line from this point out to here, where does this line end on the front of this dock area here? And then I look over to my, draw, uh, to my photograph and I say, it's a little bit left of the top of the ridge of this roof here. So this is the ridge here, the ridge of the roof. So when we're talking about structures and this, these fishing shacks, you have the ridge of the roof here, which is the very, very top point of the, the roof, the ridge. And then you have the um, rake edges, which are the uh, ang angled um, lines that come down from the ridge of the roof, which is the very, very top point, the ridge up here. So this ridge here in this photograph these docks here are just a little bit to the left of that ridge. So if I take that ridge point there and I drop it straight down, then I notice I should be a little bit to the left of that. So I have to maybe just lift up a little bit of a pencil line there and say it's about here where that dock is here, the edge of that dock there. And then it's going to go across this way and I notice let me figure out next, where's the next longest line at the furthest point I can see. Where is that in relation to these shacks over here on the right side? So then I look over here and I say, okay, well, um, well, this here is like so, and then this goes across there. So there is a, a line here like so in the photograph. And that's about where this line is across this way. So let's do that. Let's get these lines all the way across. And again, I'm using a ruler because it really does help a lot. If you're doing a, not that you have to be that straight with your lines when you're painting, but it is good to get these good lines with your, with your ruler and your pencil so that it's, you know, kind of, it makes it easier to, to plan these out, these lines out to get these docks in the front. And then I notice there's another um, vertical um, power and telephone line, a, a power, a pole here with telephone line. It's a piling that comes up and it's, um, I'm not going to actually, well, let me put that in. That, that actually looks good. Let's, let's put that in. So that will be up here like this. And let's go up higher. Let's change things around. Remember, if you're the artist, you can change things in your painting to make them look more interesting. So I'm going to make this power and telephone piling here taller than the other ones over here. Just because it's, I think it's going to look better. So you can change around your uh, drawings. Remember that? Always remember that. You can change things around to make it look better, to enhance it for your own create creativity as an artist all right so now we've got all these really good lines here and this is we're gonna say that this is the other dock back here and we'll put some pilings over here so we'll make some small vertical pilings over here like so in the distance we got our we have our line across here and then there's one more um, <clears throat> looks like a walkway of planking that comes across this way. And then if I go over here to the picture, to the photograph, I notice that that, that walkway is pretty much following almost the same angle as this um, wall here on this fishing shack here. 
it's just this way closer so we'll put that this a little bit closer this way like that it follows pretty much the same angle like that and then we'll make it a little wider here like so like that. and then you can kind of see how we already have some really good lines um, so now what I'm going to do is go over this with a darker line just so you can kind of see how everything comes together I know sometimes it's more difficult if I'm drawing lighter lines to get things into this uh, um, sketch and rectangle here but and then I think I noticed here's the sea level I don't know what that was I have to All right, I will take one more uh, break for just a second, um, and uh, we'll get started in just two minutes. Again, take breaks whenever you need them. Um, you may not need them all the time. You might only need a few breaks throughout your whole painting process, drawing and painting process. It's up to you. You can work as much or as little as you want. Uh, I'm going to maybe just come over here more and get some more of these. These are some more pilings and things like that along here. Like that. I think I'll end this dock here. These pilings over here and this, these dock areas here. I'm going to leave this here this way we have a little bit of like room we can feel like we have some space in between the edge of the painting and this this uh, uh these pilings in this dock here where we might be uh, docking some boats and then over here this is going to be darker with more um, information there and we're going to sort of go over this again with one dark sketch pencil line which we would consider a contour drawing basically over the top of this preliminary sketch so we're calling this a preliminary sketch we get everything in a preliminary fashion first take our time get our angles correct our lines as you saw we just kind of took our time looked at our photograph kept going back and forth looking at the photograph doing a little bit at a time one shack there where is it it's a little bit past the halfway point this way next shack here it's next to it we kind of have the feel for that the other portion of this shack is um, just another section of it here is uh, lower and we got that in there that's no problem in a little shed roof there with some um, there's some posts there that are sitting holding up this small shed roof there so you can kind of see we just went along and uh, we got the horizon line of the ocean here in the distant ocean and um, again we did some of these areas here where we have the um, some of these uh, plankings and things like that and then over here there is, it might be that there are some, I'll tell you what, let's take a break. I see some more things I'm going to try to draw in next. We can paint them in actually, but I will sketch them in a little bit. But let's, let's take a break again because I'm seeing things. That's why I always like to say take breaks. This way you step back, you take a break for 5-10 minutes, get a drink of water, um, stretch out a little bit and then you come back and you look and then you start to say all right what else do I need to do that's absolutely necessary and then that's when you put in your last bit of information with your sketch and your drawing and then from that point it's all fun you're going in grabbing all our paints we're mixing up everything and getting on our beautiful washes next all right so I'll be back in a second all right let's go over now with our dark contour drawing dark pencil line just to get everything situated here and I'm going to go over the pencil line we created with our ruler here let's just go right in with this strong line there over here like this across like that over here we're going to go across like that and then we're going to do our pilings and dock over here 
and then I'll get some of the dark. The roof. Corner of the building there, fishing shack there. Corner of the building here, the next building over. This is fun to do because once you have everything lightly sketched in then you can just go over with your darker lines and uh, it makes it a lot easier and it's great to have darker lines when you're going into paint because then you can really you can see them as you're painting and, and it's not like you if you go over it you, you lose the lines you can kind of see the lines pretty pretty accurately if you're making them dark when you're painting so that's impor important and we also remember that we're doing the glazing technique on this painting. So this is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to use tons of water and paint. And uh, we'll put our posts in here like so. This next post is probably over here like that. And then if you have anything else that you think you might see, there might be a, a door over here like so. And there might be some doors and windows that we left out, so we want to... I think this is a door here, and then there's a window over here, like that. So we'll try to get in our doors and windows. Like that. And there is a... There is a, um, a walkway here. I'll put that walkway here where the door is here like that and it might go in between the two buildings this walkway I think it does actually so we'll have a bit of mystery here and these are some lines there so there's some posts too for these uh, these walkways here and I see that this is like a large this could be some storage boxes or something like that over here. But you can kind of see the lines are pretty much uh, coming together. You, you can see everything clearly. And then we have the, uh, there are some other lines over here. These might be some other vertical lines for other posts and pilings and things like that. And then we have, let's do our darker lines here, uh, here, so we, we, we want to get those in too. These, so I'm just going to go over again, use the same line, just retrace it with a darker line so you can kind of see the, like that, the darker lines here. There, and then over here, this one's kind of thinner, like that. And then we have some of these. And we'll just have fun creating some loose um, lines as we go. These lines here start to like this. These are some lines that go across this way, just loosely suggesting those. This line comes straight through here like so. And I think that looks pretty good. We have some more plankings here, so I'll just try to get those like that. Maybe uh, they don't... Let's see, I think these pretty much stay pretty much even like that. And again, we will, as we go, we will definitely improv and get some more pilings and things underneath but we don't have to draw every single pencil line in that's the thing I wanted to kind of mention you don't have to draw in every 
uh, pencil line that you see, or you don't have to draw everything in 100%. Kind of just get some some sketch in some lines that you know later we're going to do. And then there's some angled lines. Every once in a while you'll see a couple angled angled lines like that. Over here. And then there's a fishing uh, net up here it looks like. So that goes over here like so. And then there's like this. And then we're going to do the... There's a... Uh, area over here that looks like some ground, some, some actual ground area. If it's not the ground, I think it is the ground actually. I think it kind of, there's like a mound of rock and ground over here that kind of sticks up out of the water and then the rest of the water is over here so we're gonna have that and then there's some, there's a pole there and then there's uh, another pole over here and then there's a uh, there's a uh, fishing net here like that like that so that's a uh, fishing net like that there And then if you need to, uh, there we go. Just trying to get that accurate. The uh, the net, the fish net over here. They have some netting over here that might be for um, using on the boats, and they just maybe have it out here right now. Maybe they're making some repairs to the fishnet, fishnets that they're going to bring out onto their boats. And then we have some more Okay. The rest we're going to paint in. I think you can kind of see that it's really coming along nicely. Maybe another window over here. Um, and I think that's it. There are a few more things over here. And again, like we said, we are going to paint in some... There's some water under these shacks over here. Plenty of pencil lines. We have tons of pencil lines, so we don't have to worry when we go in to paint this now. Uh, next, you have plenty of information that you're going to use, and you're just going to start filling in everything as you go, or painting in everything as you go. But we always remember now, what kind of technique are we going to use? Yes, you've got it. The glazing technique. Tons of water. First wash is going to be completely um, light and watery and interesting colors the blues and the greens of the painting and then <clears throat> when we have that first wash completely on the paper then we let it dry 100 percent i am using block block paper we always remember block paper is really easy to um you can find this online this happens to be arches I'm using rough arches rough here. This is ar ar you know arches satin paper, which is smooth paper. You can do a painting on smooth or rough paper, doesn't matter, but the the thing is the block paper is great. You can see how these are all glued. Each page there's maybe 20 or maybe 15 or 20 um watercolor papers on this block and they're all glued together. So what happens is when you do a really use tons of water on your first wash, all the paper gets buckled and all the water's in there and it's all bubbly looking and buckled the paper. But when, when you let that dry for a half an hour to an hour, or if you use a blow dryer in five or 10 minutes, it goes back to perfectly smooth flat paper like that. So that you can begin to go back in and get lots of um, lines and whatever details you're putting on your paper. And it's not going to be like your paper's all buckled. So that's the, really the advantage of having your block paper is you can use really wet washes and then once that dries 100% after you put a really wet wash on it, 
the paper flattens out again perfectly so that you can go back in and you're not hampered by buckled paper and problems like that. So that's why I really enjoy the um, block paper like this. And uh, Arches makes great block paper. I know Fabriano makes block paper. Most of your paper manufacturers do make block paper. Um, so you have to kind of search it out and find it, but it's it's there, it's out there. And uh, I know many of you already use block paper, so I'm not really, I'm just kind of, maybe some of you that are brand new. And if you're brand new here, welcome. Thanks for coming by. Um, so yeah, if you are brand new here, I'm just mentioning some of these things here in case you're deciding to maybe try some block paper eventually um, to see how that works for your um, paintings. Okay. All right. So let's do the uh, painting next. Let's just take another quick break. All right, so before we start, I just wanted to maybe zoom in on the uh, photograph here. So I'm going to lift up my phone here and put this over here. And I'm going to try to zoom in on this if I can, just so you can kind of see a, a real close uh, view of the uh, photograph here. So I apologize. I'm still trying to improve my uh, skills here with my... Um, with my video making here on YouTube. But this should be good. Now you can always, if you have to, you could do a screen capture, a screenshot of this as I zoom in for you. And then you'd have it. You'd kind of see, that. there it is. Um, I can also edit this to see if I can make it look a little more brighter. I'm looking at it and kind of seeing that it doesn't look all that tremendously bright. Uh, let me see, can I do this? There we go. That's a little brighter. That looks better. Okay, so I'm overdoing it just so you can kind of see. We might actually use this. We're going to save this. See how I did that? I brightened everything up. That looks really good. So for a watercolor painting, and you know probably if you've been following me for a while, if you're brand new, again, welcome, and you might not kind of be you know, used to my style of painting, but I like to use a lot of lights in my paintings and not as much darks. You know, some got some watercolor uh, artists on YouTube, some uh, artists like to use lots of dark paint and use tons of darks and middle tones. I'd rather have a lot of light lights in my paintings. So maybe more of a higher key. You, we, we call this in watercolor high key, low key, middle key. You've probably heard this in watercolors, uh, you know, Especially if you've been you know around a while in watercolors, you kind of hear that term high key, low key, middle key. I tend to paint high key a lot of times, not always, but I tend to favor that. I really do enjoy that the most, which is a lot of lights, a lot of bright looking light in my painting and white paper as much as possible. A lot of times I just really am attracted to a lot of bright light in my painting like that. So this here is kind of what we're after. This is what we want our painting to look like when we're finished. So let me save that. So you can do these kind of adjustments when you when you save your own photographs to work from. So when you're online and you're searching for your subject matter to paint and you go and you look and you look up different scenes you want, a landscape, a seascape, fishing shacks, um, ocean, uh, you know, ocean scenes, um, whatever it is, flowers, what, whatever you like to paint. When you look up those paint, uh, that information online, you can save those pictures that you have online and then you can adjust them. And that's exactly what we did here. We just took our phone and clicked on our photograph and clicked on adjusting our photograph. You just have the um, uh, adjustments on here. You can make things brighter and um, darker if you want, lighter if you want. You can adjust uh, the colors if you want, make the colors less bright and intense, or you can make the colors more intense and more uh, interesting. So it's up to you, but you have your, we're so lucky today, we have so many great things like phones and iPads and home computers. We can take, we can become almost like a photographer. You can you can almost be like a photographer as well as a watercolor artist. So you, you, you know, take your photographs and you enhance them and you adjust them. You maybe shrink them down. You Maybe you can zoom in in one section of a photograph that you like. Instead of maybe using the whole photograph, you can kind of crop it down and make it smaller and trim out the outer edges of things and then you zoom into more of what you want to see. So that's a really big help if you're a watercolor artist. You can adjust your photographs that you find online if you like to work from photographs. I like to uh, certainly um, 
work from photographs so I'm on the internet. So here I'm just going to say done and I'm going to, that will be saved like that. And then we'll go back to there and you can kind of see how that works. <clears throat> so that's going to be perfect. That's exactly what we want our painting to look like when we're finished or close to it. So let's do this. Let's take this now. We'll zoom back out like that. Perfect. And then we'll take our phone. We'll put this back over here so it's on cam. So now we still have our phone on cam. You can see that. Obviously, some of you, I know you probably work from like uh, panel TVs large screen TVs maybe some of you, or home computers, large screens, or even iPads. iPads are perfect working with watercolors. And uh, you'll, so you'll be able to see this pretty, pretty well if you're working on a larger screen. But in any case, we have our palette here, perfect, all our colors. We have our photograph. Again, we enhanced that. We just saw how we did that. I just used the one adjustment, the um, light and dark adjustment on the photograph, and then saved it, and that's what we have. And then over here, again, we have our pencil drawing. We did the um, whole layout of how we're, we got to the final pencil drawing composition and now we're just going to start in with our um, washes so let's I'm going to use a regular round brush and uh, I have fresh clean water so I have fresh clean water in a water bucket and what I'll do is I'm just going to make the decision that I want to go you know light with my uh, first wash I don't want to go really dark let me go light lighter I don't want to I don't want to go with a lot of dark tonal values, I want to keep the uh, brightness of this painting. So I'm going to use um, cobalt blue and cobalt blue and cerulean blue. You can kind of see I'm mixing the cerulean blue and the cobalt blue up here, and then even a little bit of uh, raw sienna. So raw sienna mixed in with some of that blue is going to give us a kind of a green, goldish green, like a warm warm blue kind of a bluish green and uh, so we're gonna mix up plenty we want to have plenty of wash here because we are gonna make this very wet glazing technique lots of water remember when we use the glazing technique we're always we're looking to have some really good um, um, washes some really good color lots of water so i'm gonna use some french ultramarine blue too up here too as well lots of cerulean blue cobalt blue i'm using all my blues french ultramarine blue cobalt blue and cerulean blue here like that so that's going to be our predominant color with some raw sienna which is close to yellow ochre if you didn't have raw sienna but you had yellow ochre you can use yellow ochre Raw Sienna is better because it's actually transparent. So um, that's why I like to use Raw Sienna for that first wash because it's a lighter, more transparent wash. Yellow Ochre is opaque, kind of a little bit more opaque of a color, but I think that looks pretty good. And um, we can also add a little bit of alizarin crimson over here on the left. And some well, some lizard and crimson and uh, some red, some purple and red. So lizard and crimson and purple, like that. Over here, we're gonna maybe add some of that into, maybe a touch of cadmium red. And the reason I'm adding all of these colors is because that's what's in our painting, and there's also yellow. So let's add some cadmium yellow. So what I'm going to try to do is, you can kind of see here, I mixed all these colors. These colors of the shacks are the cadmium red is the one shack. It kind of looks like it's a cadmium red. Cadmium yellow is this other shack over here. So that's yellow, so gold, you know, yellow, gold, and yellow there. And then we have some raw sienna, which is kind of ties in with the gold. And then we have tons of blue for the sky, obviously, for the sky wash and the water, and some green. The uh, green is... Um, for the, for the water, the water has a, a kind of a greenish tone to it. And um, I, but I think that's good. So we've got plenty of colors mixed up. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to wet a sponge. 
with fresh clean water. So I'm going to empty out my water pail. I'm going to pour fresh clean water into my water bucket. And I'm going to use a sponge. And I'm just going to wet this paper with a sponge like this. Now if you want to, I would say because we have so much pencil lines on this painting, we're probably not going to be it's not going to be good to kind of go over the top of this with a sponge. So let's just use our flat brush here and get a lot of water on the paper. Let's add tons of water to this paper right now. Like this. So you can kind of see I'm flooding the paper with lots of water with my flat brush here. This is a Da Vinci um, flat brush and it's a 30 millimeter. So it's not extremely large as far as the brush brushes go, but it's a decent size. You know, you can kind of see it compared to a round brush like a number six or number eight. This is a number eight round brush. So it's, but it's perfect for this size paper. This size paper is probably like a 10 by 12. And that's what we want to do. I'm flooding the paper with water because we want to really get that watery effect with the glazing technique right now. So here we go. Plenty of water. You can always take a paper towel if you want. At the bottom of the page you can take a paper towel and just any excess water that flows down the paper. I'm on a slight angle, maybe about 7 degrees or 10 degrees of, of pitch on my paper. I have my paper tilted a little bit down this way. So I maybe clean up a little bit of the water on the bottom of the paper. But plenty of water on the paper. And then I will add a little more water up top. Like this. One last time. Just a little bit of water up top. Then I'm going to go in and we'll start getting our washes in here. And as you recall, I did mention that I'd like to keep this light, this painting light. But I will add some of that red and purple in the sky wash. And we're not so much concerned about having this being like a perfectly realistic painting. I'm trying to actually have tons of beautiful color and washes, as you can see. And uh, and as long as I'm mixing all the colors all the way throughout the whole painting, that's all we need to do. So all the colors are here now. So any other color that we use from this point onward, once the paper dries 100%, we already have it on the paper itself, on this watercolor paper, so it won't look out of place or kind of, you know, <clears throat> it's always good to have all of your colors harmonizing on your paintings. That does look good if you can harmonize all your colors. Use all the same colors throughout the whole painting that you're doing, and then that'll always get a really good effect for you. So now I'll just go around and dry up some of the water that's splashed over and at the bottom of the painting too as well. I'll just lift up some of that extra water that's flowed on down. And look at that, we have a wonderful first glazing and first wash on there. And then I wouldn't fuss with it much past what we just did now. We just got it on the, you know, it's going to be light. It's going to dry a lot lighter than you see right now. And it's already pretty light as you can see. But that's what we wanted to do is get like a tone on the paper, a tonal value of very, very light tonal value of all the colors that we're going to continue to use throughout this uh, painting. So let's let this dry. I'm going to let this dry naturally, I think, versus using a blow dryer. Um, I'm going to have some dinner and then I'll come back after dinner and that'll be probably perfect because it'll be about an hour and uh, it should be at that point dry. And you'll see the paper will be now, it'll be flat again, the paper nice and flat. So we have a really great canvas or a great watercolor paper to work on that's nice and smooth, flat, no bumps or buckles, and then we can get in our uh, all our lines and our colors and our paint, you know, paint in all of our colors on our shacks here and our uh, the pilings. We'll get all the details in here, but uh, I think you'll see that it's really 
uh, coming along here and especially when you get that first wash on like we have here you always have to remember you have to let this dry 100 percent 100 percent dry um, before you go back in and start painting again and then i think at that point once you've done that a number of times for quite a long time then you can start experimenting with going back into this painting like this while it's damp a little bit but i wouldn't suggest it if you're sort of like not 100 percent used to working with the glazing technique you always want to let this first wash dry 100 percent so the paper's perfectly flat dry to the touch and then you go in and you start doing your all, all your other washes and again if you're more experienced with it then fine go go for it uh, but when it starts to dry but it's got a little bit of dampness to it you might be able to start putting in some washes and get uh, some interesting effects too as well but i'm going to actually um show the proper way to do it if you're still learning and you're trying to get that perfect um painting and um close to as perfect as possible and that would be letting this dry 100 percent because it makes your life so much easier you won't have any problems with um washes looking really unpleasant looking and um flowing out and going into other areas that you don't want it to it becomes unmanageable if you try to paint on wet paper like this after you do this first wash all right so let's start up again in just about an hour or if you have a blow dryer you can blow dry this off you know within 10 15 minutes or even 5 10 minutes at most you'll be able to dry this all off with a blow dryer if you don't want to wait an hour but uh in any case um i'll be back once this is 100 percent dry and we'll pick up again all right so we're going to get started now with our next glazing and like we said we definitely let this dry 100 percent this is um might have a touch of dampness to it but i mean really like hardly anything it's dry to the touch but the paper might have a just a little bit of um tiny bit of buckling but but nothing that would affect us as we go in and paint so this is a touch damp probably on the underside of this sheet of paper but the top is completely dry as you can see i can slide my hand across it and it's not a problem at all okay now we're going to look at our colors on our um, fishing shacks here and i'll just start mixing the colors pretty much um, I'm going to go with cadmium red and uh, yellow, um, bur bur uh, raw sienna, raw sienna, cadmium red for that reddish brick kind of brick color. Uh, a little more cadmium red, maybe a touch of the uh, lizard and crimson for that color, maybe a touch of brown in there. And then we're, we're going to do some, I'll rinse my brush off. And then uh, we'll go in and get some raw umber and yellow, uh, cadmium yellow. So raw umber and cadmium yellow. With a touch of uh, some cerulean blue in there too. Maybe a touch of brown too. Burnt umber. And then a little bit of orange too. I think I see a little bit of orange in there. And uh, what else do we have? <clears throat> so yeah, we do see some cerulean blue there. Let's have some of that in there. And there's also some uh, viridian as well. I see in some of the areas in this uh, fish. This, there's some netting here, some fish netting, and I see some viridian green too over here in the uh, on the side of this uh, fishing shack, which is probably the same thing. Some uh, fish netting maybe rolled up and uh, stored there on the side and um, I think this is pretty good I think we can get started now let's start out with our red here and let's get some of that red color I'll paint around that window for now and that looks good a nice orangey red and then over here, same thing. That door is going to be a darker tonal value, so I can paint right over that door there. And uh, it's a little bit darker over there, so maybe I'll get some burnt umber, maybe a touch of cobalt blue to darken up that, uh, that red. A little bit there. That might be a little darker over here. 
So we'll make that just a little bit darker. For some reason, it looks like there's some shadowing over there somehow. And then some of the uh, yellow over here. And we can go right in like this. We can blend a little bit of that there. And the same thing over here, this is gold. Okay, and then we have some more of that shadow color here. I think there's some shadow colors here along the front. That would be uh, cerulean blue mixed in with a little bit of that red there. The uh, red that we made for the uh, this, this fishing shack over here. And I'll start going in and doing some of the um, pilings and things underneath. Maybe we'll go in with some darker um, burnt umber and uh, burnt umber and uh, cobalt blue. Okay, and uh, some darker shadows under there like so. And we will continue to put in shadows and There's a little bit of uh, just a tiny bit of some, maybe some roof uh, tin. Maybe it's a metal roof there. So we have a little bit of roof tins here. A little bit of shadowing over here, like that. And there's shadow under there. And under here, so I'm just slowly getting some shadows in here and there. You can add them in, you can add the um, shadows in here and there. When the, when the paper is damp, as long as you're just aware that what type of shadow is it? Is it a cast shadow? Or is it a, like kind of a, a cast shadow but kind of like not as sharp of a shadow? Sometimes shadows can be soft. So since these shadows are soft underneath some of the eaves of the roof, um, I can add them in while the these these are wet, the washes are wet. And then... Uh, I'm going to maybe continue over here. Raw umber, burnt umber, raw umber, a little bit of cerulean blue. There's a little bit of a uh, A little bit of uh, cadmium yellow. 
there's a little bit of gold, raw umber, some blue, some green. There's some viridian over here. And we can go with some burnt uh, sienna, burnt umber, French uh, cerulean blue. And then we can start getting in some of these uprights here, some of these pilings. And again, we're not going to get too um, I like to mix up the the tone, tonal values and the colors, so I would definitely do some browns, some blues. And I'll just keep continuing to work these, the docks and the pilings. And then you can see that we definitely have these, kind of these uprights. There's a lot of um, uprights in this uh, painting, vertical uh, lines. So this is kind of really nice. And I'm just going to get them in, and I'm not going to get too fussy where I start to uh, just, I try to get them in decently here. And there's a few on the angles like that. And there's some over here like that. more over here. There's some lines in the uh, boards on the uh, plank on the planking. And again I try to change up the Try to change up the uh, colors. You know, I don't want to go with just one color. You can kind of see I'm mixing up um, cobalt blue and some burnt umber up here. Maybe some cadmium red down here with some cerulean blue. And this way we can get a nice mixture of uh, different colors for our darks. And uh, I think this is looking pretty good. We have uh, some shadowing under this box here. Maybe a little bit of a shadow on this side there, like so. Like that. And we are really 
this is coming along really nicely. Um, I would say we could shift to a smaller brush right now. I'm going to use maybe a smaller, like number four, to get some of these. Um, so I'm going to use burnt umber and cerulean blue, a little bit of cadmium red as well. Thicker paint, not as much, uh, not as much uh, water, hardly any water, just mostly paint. And then what I'd like to do is I'm just using a um, a uh, a dowel, a wood dowel I had in my studio, just so I can sort of rest my brush. You could even do it this way, instead of getting too fancy with like something like a, a wood dowel or a piece of molding or something like that, which I sometimes do, you can you can get the same kind of straight line by just doing a little bit of line at a time. So you would just take your brush and go up a little bit like so, and then maybe take a break, maybe dab a little bit of paint off dry off some of the paint off the brush, maybe go a little lighter for a, for a little bit there. Then maybe pick up a little bit of gold, maybe here some yellow, and maybe do a little bit of yellow there for a second. But if we slowly go up and uh, just do a little bit of the line at a time and keep our hands stable on the paper, then we can get it like that. So if we just do like an inch at a time, instead of getting too fancy, then we just have, we can do it. And just like this here, this one comes down like that, an inch or two at a time. Then we come over here, we get some, maybe some more cobalt blue, dry off a little bit of the paint off the brush, just so we don't have too much paint. Make sure we don't lean in any wet paint. So I'm going to make sure I keep my hand up here and rest it on the paper up here, and then just come up and do a little more like that. And then if it's damp there, I would just do a light. So I'm again just doing like an uh, you know an inch or two at a time, just carefully, not too much paint. Dry the paint off on a tissue or paper towel or something to keep your brush kind of dry, not too wet with too much paint, like that. And you get that nice look to it. And we'll do the same thing over here. This one's kind of simple. We can just do that. And over here, this one's really thin, so we just do a thinner line like that. Okay, so now we have beautiful verticals, tons of vertical lines in our painting. Um, we want to get the ocean, maybe the uh, distant ocean. So let's uh, do some of that distant ocean like this with this small brush again, maybe a little French ultramarine blue, just to get a little more uh, zip into that. So that looks a little more interesting. And then over here too, the same thing. Like that, maybe we'll pick up some of that green, the um, Viridian, maybe drag it across here. Maybe we have a little bit of uh, the water sort of shimmering the light on the water. Like that. That's just a matter of using the brush, drying off a little bit of the paint, and then dragging the brush across on the side. And I also am using rough paper, Arches rough paper. So if you want to get these water effects where you have the light shimmering on the water, a rough paper is how, how that happens. You like using smooth paper, we couldn't get that effect. But since we are using rough paper, we're really lucky. We can kind of um, we can get that effect. So there we have it, and then we can even add in a little more exciting French ultramarine blue, maybe in a spot or two. And the 
this is looking good. I'm going to get some darks in here now for the window. And if you go over a line, no problem. You can just kind of lift up like that. We'll let this dry a little bit more, the um, the facade of these uh, fishing shacks, so that we can do the dark doors and the windows, and then also the um, uh, there's like a, a small um, staircase and like a um, walkway, elevated walkway with some posts. But this is very damp right now. All this paper here is still damp from when we did that original wash, just only 15 minutes ago or so. So it does stay damp for quite a while. We did put a decent amount of wash on there. So now's a good time to take a break. Let's take a break and uh, let this dry, the um, fishing shacks, because we have to do the windows, the posts, some of the shadowing, I think we, we do. So for that to happen, we definitely want to um, let that dry a little bit. And then this is actually, we want to see this. Like that. that line continues down this way here. And, um, okay, so we'll do that. We'll let this uh, set up a little bit. We could also do a few more. Uh... So I'll just mix up the colors a little bit for these uh, pilings here. There's qu quite a few. So every once in a while you see an angled piling like that. But most, mostly all these are uprights, vertical lines. Quite a few over here. Like that. And there's another one there. All right, I think it's looking pretty good. I think all we have to do now is just let this dry here, the, the fishing shacks, the red and the yellow golden colored paint. Let, we'll let that dry and I think we're almost finished. After we do some dark windows and doors on this structure and maybe a little bit of some siding, it looks like there's some vertical lines um, for the um, vertical planks that these buildings are comprised of. Once we can get that in, a couple more details on our uh, shacks here, then we would uh, probably, the next thing, would we'll get some of the shadowing of the dock here. Underneath these uh, docks, you'll have the uh, shadowing we have here. You can see that in the photo. There's some beautiful shadowing, which is under, it's like a shadowing on top of the water. So we'll do that water shadowing. And I think I'm going to leave most of this white paper, so I don't want to get too fancy and start doing all kinds of watercolors and things like that as far as like the color of the water. Let's leave some really light paper like we see in this here. This is kind of an exciting um, tonal value pattern that we have here which is mostly lights with some some uh, quite a bit of medium tones which is the water and the shacks and then just a little bit of the work with the post, the vertical uh, pilings and, th and details with the darks and I, I think if we stick to that game plan of kind of the um, gallon of whites, um, quart of the medium tones, which is the buildings, the uh, shacks, and then a pint of the darks, which is the piling, uh, which is the pilings in the, you know, um, the, uh, the uh, power poles and things like that. So we have that going for us. I think we're really doing quite well here. I think we have kind of the right tonal value structure that we're looking for on the painting and as well we have tons of verticals you can see all the vertical lines on this painting that dominates the whole painting which gives it a really nice pleasing look that'll always be a really um, pleasing painting if you can have something kind of dominate the whole painting like this like the verticals these all dominate the the whole look of the painting so that's we have beautiful colors in here too don't get me wrong but these vertical uprights really look beautiful and they're throughout the whole painting, which looks great. So, 
Let's take a break. We'll let this dry a little more over here, the um, fishing shacks with our red and gold colors there. And we'll get some darks in there. We might even be able to work on... Yeah, I think we can actually work on some of these darks now. So we'll do the posts. And then we have the doors, which are dark. Um, brown and cobalt blue, burnt umber, cobalt blue. So if we can get those in, that's good. We have that there. The door. And then sometimes too, <clears throat> we can scratch out a little bit of um, a little bit of paint for the post here. Like that. And uh, what else do we have? We have another door over here. And I thought this is kind of darker down there, like so. And uh, another door over here. Like that. So we have a couple of doors on our shacks here. A little bit of uh, highlights under there, or I should say shadows under there, under the uh, the eaves and the rake edges of the building. And then some more uh, cerulean blue. So I have some cerulean blue, and again we're doing more verticals. These look really good. I'm just trying to get plenty of verticals, and that works really well. That looks good. And there's some shadow under there, like so. And then again, some uh, cobalt blue, burn umber, cerulean blue. And we'll just get our, we have a, a stair staircase here and walkway that goes over the other side. that All right, let's leave this as it is right now. We'll come back in just a few minutes after this dries a little more. I think actually we're just going to do the shadowing, uh, you know, the um, shadowing and reflections of the um, underside of the um, these uh, docks here uh, on the water. And I think that'll that's all that we'll need. And we'll, we'll move back to a larger brush for that. We'll go back to our number eight round brush to get our shadowing over here. And we're going to do it really loosely, really quickly. And we'll figure out what colors I think we're going to use. Um, probably this here, which is going to be um, Viridian Green, Cerulean Blue, maybe a little bit of Cadmium Red, just to kind of get a nice mixture of warm and cool. Like that. So that'll be our shadow mixture, I think. We'll try to use that and see how it works. Some uh, cobalt blue as well. All right, let's try that in just a second. Let's just uh, take a quick break, um, refocus, and then we'll come back and get those last bit of um, shadows and reflections for our water underneath this uh, scene here under the docks, and we'll see how it goes. 
All right, so we're going to finish up here with our washes underneath the docks here, and uh, we have our colors already mixed. And let's just see here. Let's look at our photograph, and we can kind of just get those. We could add a little bit of water first, maybe. So you can add a little bit of water first to your um, paper, and then add in some color to that. I'm going to use uh, cerulean blue and green, the viridian green, that splash on some water I think that looks good and if you go over a spot you can always use a little bit of tissues and then over here I think we have a little more And like we said before, the light's coming from this direction forward. So you're seeing the shadowing, the reflections and shadowing of the uh, water. And I just might go across this way a little bit with a few. Just a couple of uh, horizontal strokes like this, just to give it a little bit of that watery look. I think that looks good. And there's a little bit of gold color here, I noticed. And some cerulean blue. So I'll just add that bit of color there. Maybe even a little bit of red, even though I don't see any. I'm going to add a touch of red just to balance the, the colors. And a couple of splashes. Just going to do a couple um, for the uh, planks, a little bit of cobalt blue, burnt umber. Then I'll dry off the brush a little bit and just a couple of uh, these uh, planks like that. Just a couple of indications of some planking. Like that. And then uh, maybe just a couple, uh, maybe some cerulean blue and the burnt umber, like this. And maybe I'll dry off the brush a little bit. And maybe I'll just do a couple, uh, just a couple of uh, lines like this. Just like that, doesn't have to be perfect. Like that. Maybe a seagull up here. Okay. And, um, A 
Okay, I think this is good. I think we can call this a finished painting. We don't want to go too much more. And then when we add too many details, then we kind of um, start to um, have issues with things looking too, maybe too cluttered and too much uh, busyness to the painting. I think this is just the right amount of details where we can uh, call this finished. I um, uh, hope you'll uh, consider subscribing to my channel um, as we wrap up here. Uh, the, the subscribe button is just down below on the right hand side. Um, that means you'll just be kind of joining along with us week after week as we go and uh, you'll see my videos um, in your um, YouTube um, homepage when we make a new video. You'll just be alerted that we made a new video so you can kind of keep up with what we're doing uh, on a regular basis and you work when you want to and you know sometimes maybe you'll just watch if you're not so interested in drawing and painting a certain painting but most times you probably want to jump in and have a fun time and, and work along with us all here. We're, you know, thousands of us are working every week here. We're getting always better at our watercolor paintings and drawings because we're just working every week, you know, week after week, month after month, and year after year. That will equal success and um, better paintings always. So um, thanks again for coming by, painting with me. And um, what we'll do is um, we'll do more paintings like this uh, with the glazing technique. I paint in both the glazing technique and the uh, a la prima technique, as well as blending both of those together sometimes. So it all depends on what we're painting. But you'll get to learn a lot of interesting techniques and methods here on my channel. So please stick with me. Have lots of fun. Enjoy the watercolor journey, everybody. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.